Hi, I'm Taylor Jones. And I'm Christopher Hall. Today we're talking about a kind of sentence that happens in African American English and some other varieties that you've all probably heard before. Sentences like, I don't know about no Drake. I don't know nothing about no Drake. I ain't concerned about no Drake. Drake. You won't be concerned about Drake. That's on your time. Or even, these kids don't know nothing about no Gatorade in a glass bottle. You might have learned in school that two negatives make a positive, but since you're at this event, you probably also know that this is wrong, and that linguists know that multiple negation is perfectly grammatical in many languages, including Italian, Russian, and Hebrew, among others. For instance, Maria non ha visto nessuno. Maria nikavo ni vidila. Maria lorata af echad. Maria didn't see anybody. Or better yet, Maria ain't seen nobody. Our example sentences are doing something more interesting than this, though. Normally, we expect that no to function like classroom English any. That is, it doesn't pick out a specific, uniquely identifiable thing. I don't have that album, and I don't have any albums, or I ain't got no albums, don't mean the same thing. I ain't got no albums isn't talking about a specific, known album. But in our first examples and others like them, people use this no before specific, uniquely identifiable nouns including proper names like Drake or Earth, Wind & Fire, or even Taylor Swift. Drake, Earth, Wind & Fire, Taylor Swift. So what's going on here? This is a social strategy. There's a rule-based pattern way that allows us to appear to break the grammar in such a way that we can include proper nouns in direct quotations. The rules of language in general say that we can't use definite noun phrases here, things like proper names or the anything. But when we break the rules in this way, it's specifically to say, stop, pause, hold on, rewind, we are not on the same page. This strategy takes that noun that the no precedes and turns it into a topic or category like Drake and people like Drake. Or it broadens negation to include the attributes of the thing discussed. For instance, details about Drake, his personal life, his professional life, where he started, where he is now. Let's take a look at a classic example in sociolinguistics that's famous for other reasons. In a 1972 paper by Bill LeBove, an interviewer asks somebody named Speedy if a cat ever got into his coop. He says they never got into one of his. Junior suggests, unless it's a jive coop, and Speedy counters with the now famous, it ain't no cat can't get in no coop. He's still effectively talking about his coop. Junior's assumptions about the world can be represented like this. And Speedy is challenging those assumptions. A jive coop isn't a coop at all, and I told you I built a coop. The meaning is still that no cat has ever gotten into his coop, but it's now implied by a broader statement. Speedy's rejecting shared assumptions and forcing Junior to take a step back and reevaluate. This is important because these sentences and their translations and interpretations become canonical descriptions of AAE, and this has real-world effects. Everywhere from our classrooms to courtrooms, doctor's offices, and anywhere where professional record-taking is involved. And the examples we're talking about today are more complicated than just multiple negation. You can't just replace the no word with standard any and have the same meaning. We have to think about how language is used socially. We need shared cultural assumptions about what no is doing in the sentence in the first place forcing the listener to reevaluate their assumptions. 